Today's video is sponsored by Tradeify. What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the workshop. I hope you're all doing well. Now in this video I'm going to build a garden arbor and just like everything I've built for the garden so far, planters and benches and all that good stuff, I'm going to keep it to a nice simple construction technique. So if you're more into your gardening than you are into your carpentry or woodworking, you will be able to make yourself this. So a few basic tools will get you through this project and you'll have a really nice garden arbor at the end of it. There is a little bit of joinery in it but it's not overly complicated and I take you through the whole process and we have have, like I said, a really nice garden arbor at the end of it. Now, I've put mine at the entrance to where I grow all of my vegetables. It's kind of phase one of a project that I'm working on. So I'm going to fence it off either side and build raised beds to grow clematis and all that stuff up the fence and up the side of the garden arbor. So it's kind of phase one of a project. We're going to build ourselves a really nice garden arbor. So let's get on and do it. Okay guys, let's crack on with this project and let's take a look at what we're going to be using. So I have pressure treated timber for this, so most of it's going to be made out of 4x2 or 2x4 pressure treated. I have one length of 6x2, I have a length of 2x1 and I have some pre-made trellis to go in the side of it. Now depending on the size of the arbor you want to make, get your trellis to suit. This is 600 mil in width, so I'm not going to make a particularly big arbor. It's going to be a nice size, but it's not going to be too big. And I got the trellis pre-made just because I don't have time to go make my own trellis. So that's just the easiest way of doing it. Now, when you guys asked me in the last planter video exactly what I was paying for my pressure treated timber. So this is May 2022 and a length, a 16 foot or a 4.8 meter length of 4x2 is costing me 10.99 euros per length and a length of 6x2 so 16 foot or 4.8 meters is costing me 18.70 so it's quite expensive it's really gone up in price and there's no sign of it coming back down anytime soon so yeah timber is getting quite expensive so that's exactly what we have here now let's get on and start dimensioning this up Okay, so the first thing we want to decide is the height of our arbor. So whatever height you decide to make yours, you're going to cut your pieces to suit. So we're going to use the 4 by 2s for the uprights. So I want mine to be 2.1 meters or 7 foot tall from the ground. And I want to leave about 16 inches or 400 millimeters below the ground just to set it in some post mix, just to set in the arbor, keep it all nice and stable. So that's 2.5 meters I have to cut my four uprights or seven foot plus 18 inches so what's that that's uh, eight and a half feet long is what my uprights are going to be roughly in imperial so let's get on and cut four of those Now, as always, when I'm cutting multiple pieces the same length, I always set up a stop lock and you only have to measure once and just run all your pieces up against it and they will all be identical. Just like that. Okay, so we have our four uprights cut. Now we just need to make our cross pieces and to get the width of those, we just set our trellis in just like that internally in our uprights and that's how we're gonna make our frame. So it's extremely simple and quick to assemble the sides of this. So this is a 600 or two foot wide trellis. So cut four pieces, two feet or 600 wide and screw them in place. And I'm just gonna use some 90 degree clamping jigs that I've made just to make sure everything is nice and square and true. So it's a case of just get some screws into this now and we're almost done on the sides and then we can start fixing in our trellis. Okay, so this is just all going to be screwed together. I'm going to be using some 100 mil screws to go in the side of this. They're probably overkill, but I want to keep this nice and strong. So again, just using the riser cutter screws, I find these to be great. Now, I'm not sponsored. I bought these with my own money. I just find these to be the best screws. They're kind of lubricated. You don't have to pre-drill, even though I'm going to pre-drill for these because they're so long. But they really do get a good grip and they last for ages and they don't rust. So, 100 mil screws in the side, just using the 90 degree clamping jig. Again, I have a woodworking jigs build video, show you how to make these. They're nice and simple and quick and they're great to have because you can just clamp everything together and it keeps it exactly at 90 degrees and you don't have to worry about holding it as you screw. So, let's rock on and screw all this together. Now one thing you're probably going to find is this trellis or this pre-made trellis will not be square. You know, this stuff is pretty made 
pretty quickly and pretty shoddily it's just stapled together but you can get a bit of adjustment so once you have it inside in your frame a couple of light taps and you can get that whole thing to shift a small bit and it should square it up into the corners and you should be good to go so a couple of clamps to help you with this keep everything nice and square and just screw it together and it's happy days okay so there's the two sides of our garden arbor now almost built so the frames are constructed now we just got to fit in the trellis frame in place so very very hot so i've gone and put on the shorts and i've also split down the two by one pressure treated just to make two trims to go either side so that we can fix our trellis too now if you haven't got a table saw and you've no way of splitting down timber then just use the full piece of two by one there's absolutely no problem whatsoever it'll be sitting inside behind the trellis so it's technically not really going to be seen and even if you do see it it's not going to be unsightly i just for cost purposes just split this down makes it a little bit cheaper i don't have to buy two lengths one lens will do so now let's get this all fit together so essentially i'm building my frame on the ground so the outside of the arbor is facing down so what i want to do now is just catch my trellis just knock it out there flip it around because i want to keep the front of my trellis flush with the outside so I can grow my plants up so you can see we have a nice good snug fit. Now I can see my trellis is now flush with the outside of my uh, arbor. So I'm going to just put in the lats now right behind the trellis like that. I can fix these in place. That sets my depth for these. I don't do any measurement whatsoever. So we'll just get these in place, we'll fix them, flip it around, and then we'll fix the trellis to these. Now I'm just gonna staple these in place. If you don't have a staple gun, then by all means, you can just screw this, get, just, get yourself some nice narrow thin screws and screw this in place using your screw gun. Absolutely no problem there whatsoever. It's just for speed purposes, I'm gonna staple these. Okay, so that's essentially the sides of our garden arbor now complete. Now you need to decide on the width of your armor because we're going to make the frame for the top. This is the top part that will hold it together. Now we're going to add some decorative pieces. So I'm going to keep mine 900 millimeters wide. So that's roughly about three feet, just an inch under three feet wide. I think that's going to be absolutely plenty. I don't want it too big. The space it's going into is not a very big space. So that's going to be nice. So it's going to be 800 in width this way and the opening is going to be 900 so that's going to give me the dimensions for my frame so you just guys will figure out what which you want to make yours and that will um, decide on the frame you're going to make for your top so i need to cut two pieces now the width of this to the outside of these four by twos plus an extra two four by twos that's why i have them standing there so that's what i'm going to measure so that's going to work out as 118 centimeters or 1080 millimeters so that's exactly what i'm cutting near enough 46 inches so i've got to cut two pieces that length now and we can build our frame to go on top this is very very simple again it's just a square frame so let's get on and do that okay guys there's the frame for our top built couldn't be simpler just cut those two pieces to the length that i showed you the internal pieces are the exact width of your arbor sides. Cross piece in the middle, nice and simple. So three of those, two of those, screw it all together, keep it nice and square, and that's nice and simple. And how it works, it's just gonna sit down like that, and when we're assembling our arbor, it's gonna take our sides, and they both will sit down inside in that guy. Just like that, nice and snug. And that's essentially the frame for the top of our arbor. Now, we're not going to leave it looking like that. We have to make this pretty. So we have some decorative pieces to make now. So let's get on and do that.
Now before we continue on, I just want to quickly thank Tradeify for sponsoring today's video. Now Tradeify is the fastest growing job management platform in the world designed specifically for self-employed tradespeople. So if you're in the trades, you're on the tools all day, plumber, carpenter, electrician, painter, decorator, roofer, tiler, whatever. Like I said, if you're on the tools all day and you struggle with that office work, definitely check it out. I use it in my business as an electrician and it saves me countless hours and headaches every week. It's everything from invoicing to quoting for jobs, from scheduling jobs, managing a small crew through it, tying in with your accountant software at the end of the year and so much more so i highly recommend it like i said it saves time and headaches on all that office work so there's a link in the description below to go check it out there's also a 14 day free trial so you can play around with the full job management platform see how it works for you no strings attached and there's a promo code man and shed which gives you 50 percent off for your first three months so if you're on the tools in the trades struggling with that office work do yourself a favor get down and check it out it's really helped me out so i'm recommending it to you guys now let's get back on with this garden arbor Okay, so we have our top part here and we're going to assemble this before we put it all together so we can make it nice and easy for us. So now we've got to decide on our decorative pieces. So we're going to put a 6x2 on the front and back and then we're going to cross it then with 4x2s on top with decorative cuts on the end of those. So you just want to decide how much of an overhang you want to leave outside your garden arbor. Again, that's going to be up to your taste and what you want to do. So I'm going to leave 200 mil, so that's about 8 inches of overhang either end. So all i got to do is add 400 mil onto the length of this, which gives me a hundred. 158 centimeters or 1580 millimeters I think that's right so that's the pieces I'm going to cut two of the six by twos now that length and then we're going to put some decorative cuts in the end of those let's do that Okay guys, so I went and cut the two 6 by 2s and I also cut the 4 by 2s to cross the top and they're going to have a 200 millimeter or 8 inch overhang over each side as well. So that's how you get your measurements. So there's our frame that we built. The 6 by 2 will just center with that and we'll screw this on. Same with the back and then we just put on our 4 by 2s on top. We're going to notch these so they're going to sit down over those. Just like that. I'm going to put 5 in total evenly spaced across. We'll have one in center and then two either side of the one that's on the center and that will all assemble just like that. Now we obviously don't want to leave square ends on these, it doesn't look very pretty. So a couple of options here, you can be as decorative as you like, you can keep it nice and simple and just put simple 45s on the end of these, that looks absolutely great. Just measure back whatever distance you want, put a 45 degree chop in it and it does look pretty good. But I want to put curved ends in these now, so that's what we're going to do. So we're going to start with the six by twos, put a nice curved cut in the end and we'll use, we'll cut one, we'll use that to draw as a template for the other three. So let's do that. Okay, so just before I mark out my curves, I just wanna get a couple of reference points. So I've just marked the dead center of the six by two, and I've just squared that line across, and I have the center of my frame here. So I've done that both sides, just line them up exactly. So now I know these are exactly centered. I'm just gonna scribe a line up the inside on both sides, just to give me a little reference, just for when I'm drawing my curves, because I don't want my curves going back that far. And uh, it'll just give me an idea of what distance I have to work with, so that I can kind of make these uh, curves pleasing to the eye. So let's get on and draw our curves. Now, when it comes to drawing curves, I often just like to freehand them in. Just a nice flowing line, just that kind of feels right. I'm pretty happy, I think, with that. So I can see that's where my frame is. That's my reference line there. So I want to keep out from that a bit, start my curve there. And we never want to go straight out like that. So we just want to curve off that end there as well. I think that's going to look nice. So that's going to be my line. So that's the one we're going to attempt to cut first. And when we have this to a kind of a satisfactory uh, angle or look to it, I'll um, use this as a template to mark the rest of them. So I think something like that is what I'm going to go with. Okay, so I'm going to go with that curve. I'm happy enough and I'm going to try and cut it on the bandsaw. It's a little bit of a tricky cut, but the piece will be fully supported across onto where my router table is. So these are the exact same height, so I can kind of support the piece there and just kind of maneuver it around from here. I should be good to go. Now you could use a jigsaw to do this as well. Not a problem there. I'm going to use my bandsaw. And like I said, you could just put a 45 in this. That's absolutely no problem as well, just to keep it nice and simple because a 45 does look quite good on an arbor as well. So I'm going to get on now and cut this curve and then I can use that to mark out the wrist. Oh, 
Okay, there's the first attempt at cutting it out. Now, happy accident here. The blade that I have on it is not really for cutting uh, curves as, you know, with a radius like that. So it's kind of a sh more shallow radius. So I took the first cut and I actually quite like that. So I'm gonna keep that rather than going in any further. I'm gonna keep it kind of a more shallow radius here. Happy days. So you'll use this to mark out the rest of them and I'll get on and cut those. Okay guys, now that all the curves are cut, I'm just clamping them together and just matching up the curves with the spoke shave. So just take out whatever little discrepancy came off the bandsaw and we can get these pretty close indeed. Now if you haven't got a spoke shave, then you can use a sander just to put the curve, clamp both of them together, sand both of them at the same time and you'll just match up the two curves. It's nice and easy. So I get on and do this and I have to do this to the end of all five of the four by twos as well. So I'm gonna put a similar, obviously smaller curve in the four by two, but something that will complement this. And when I have all that done, we'll jump back in and we'll notch the four by twos. It is hot today. Okay, so I cut all the curves in the end of my four by twos. So they're all looking good, I'm happy with them. And I've just screwed on my six by two onto my frame. I've screwed it from the inside so you won't see any screws from the front. Now, I just wanna center up these pieces. I wanna take a notch out of these halfway down the piece so that it's gonna sit down on top of that. Now, in order to center this up, I've just flipped this piece over because it's easier to mark from an edge in than from a bottom of a curve. And so I can see that I'm 200 mil or eight inches both sides. So I'm just gonna square a little line up there for those. If I can find my pencil, here it is. Okay, so now that I have one of them marked, I've just clamped them all together, squared it off with a block at the end so they're all perfectly aligned and I'm just transferring the marks from the first one now across all the rest of them, so nice and simple. I'm actually gonna cut them all simultaneously as well with a track saw. Now, if you haven't got a track saw, you can do them one by one with a, with a circular saw. If you haven't got a circular saw, you can do this with a hand saw as well, no problem whatsoever. So, we're just gonna cut to the depth of halfway through these, run a few cuts, and then chisel all these out. Okay, track saw is all set up. I have the track support at front and back. I have the blade set to the correct depth. So I'm just gonna run a cut on both lines and then a bunch of cuts in the middle once I have the outside lines cut first. So let's get on and do that. Okay, now all our cuts are done. It's just a case of knock this out with a chisel. So just do multiple cuts and this stuff absolutely flies out. So I just pull the marking gauge line across the bottom of it just to give me a point to set my chisel into. Couple of taps, nice straight line. And we can come at it from the other side then as well. Nice sharp chisel. Very clean off of the bottom. Happy days. Right, so all our notches are knocked out. I'm just putting them in place, spacing them evenly across. So we have a good snug fit on all these joints, which is great. So I have all these ones in, just knocking in the last one. So like I said, it's a nice tight fit. hammer at home. We're going to drive a screw down through the top then and just checking that our gaps are even back to front. We just got to tap that out of touch. And that's happy days. 
Okay guys, the top of our garden arbor is just finished. I have two more pieces that I want to add. So I've just cut two more offcuts to go on the end here, just to cover off the end grain of both these boards. So when that board is sitting in there, it just looks a little bit more finished. It looks a little bit nicer in my opinion, but I'm not gonna screw them in place just yet because I want to use them now to assemble this. So I'll show you exactly what I mean now. Let's crack on, let's get our sides into our top. Okay guys, hopefully you can see where I have you set up there. So I want to assemble this now. Now, we don't want to lift all that weight up above our heads. So leave that part on the floor and we'll assemble it upside down. Now, I just want to put a couple of blocks in here just for this to sit on because we don't want this sitting all the way through to the floor. That's not how we designed it. It's made to sit inside this frame. And obviously we've put parts on top of our frame now so it's a little bit higher up. So these blocks just sit in there and the sides will sit on. So it's just a case of get our sides up now and sit it into our frame. Just like that, we want to screw that guy in place. Now, so I'm going to grab a clamp and we'll get you in for a close up. Okay guys, just give you a quick close up of what I'm doing here. So I've just driven in a big coach bolt here through this entire frame. I'm just checking with my framing square that I'm keeping everything nice and square. So I'm going to put an extra couple of screws, either side of this, some large screws, as well as that coach bolt. I'm going to do that on all four sides to hold this together. So it's just a case of drill a pilot hole and drive in that big coach bolt. So there's the coach bolts I'm using with a washer and that will go through into both of these four by twos. So that's exactly what I'm doing. It's a little hard to fill them on your own because you have to kind of hold this thing and do the whole lot as well. So I'm gonna get on, do all four sides, just driving the coach bolt and a few screws, square everything up and we should be good to go. Okay, so we have our coach bolts and screws in now. This is the area where I'm gonna be adding the piece just to cover over those two bits of end grain. And so I'm also gonna drive a bunch of screws across here and into the side as well to add strength to this frame and these screws won't be seen. Okay guys, there we go, one garden arbor all built, ready to go out into the garden. Hold on a minute guys, we are not finished yet. So I had this thing out in the garden, I had to drag it back in. I just forgot I have to put in the decorative brace pieces in each of the corners to keep this thing square. My mistake. So let me show you how I'm gonna do this. <laughs> Okay, so we gotta put in some brace pieces in each of the corners, again, just to keep this square, because well, the way we have it now in a minute, it's not gonna keep it square. So what I've done is I've cut some four by two, a 45 and a 45 here. So that's gonna sit right against that. And I can feel that 45, move it up until it hits the top of this four by two on the inside of the six by two. So I can feel that with my hand. So that's exactly how I measured that there. Now I could just leave it like that. You'd have one in each corner, that would be fine. But because we've put the curves rather than the 45s, I wanna put a nice little curve in here. So what we need to do, if I have my pencil and I don't, one second. What we need to do, is hold that there. So I need to mark that there right where this 45 would be if these two were in line and you could put a 45 onto this and onto this. You can't because the posts are inset. This has to go up on the inside. So that's the mark I want. I'm gonna measure back 70 mil from that mark, start my curve and 70 mil from here at the end of the 45 and start my curve and cut that out. This part here will not be seen. So if you guys can see it there, that's technically my 45 to 45. This part is hidden, so I need to start my curve here to here. So 70 millimeters in, 70 millimeters in, and cut the curve, if that makes sense. So I get on and bandsaw all these out, and I'll give you guys a look at the finish. I'm gonna flip this thing back upside down again, square it up and screw these in place. Okay guys, there's our decorative brace pieces in place. So I forgot, completely forgot to put these on, but they're nice and handy to make. So you can see the idea, you have your 45 here. Obviously this is inside in your frame, so you have to, you can't go from here to here. So you have to come down inside, as you can see from the back here. And these are just nice little curves. You can leave these straight, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. I suggest you leave them straight if you've gone straight cuts with your 45, but just to kind of keep the curved team that it's decorated in, I've just put some curved cuts in that. And again, this is just to hold this square. These are very important. I completely forgot them. Now, 
let's get this out in the garden one more time and get it set up. Okay guys, so we have it set in four post holes dug. I've just used some post mix. This stuff is right handy because you can drop it in dry. You don't have to mix it up beforehand and you can just pour the water down the hole afterwards. And it makes it easy to level it all up. So you can kind of walk it level. The dust will work its way underneath the feet and it's easy to level it up that way. And I've just added some more um, protection to the legs and stuff. So a bit more finish on them and we're ready to go. So this is all leveled up, set in place. I'm just gonna drop some water down onto the mix. Just a little bit and let that go off. Let that soak in, that'll go off in about an hour and uh, I can backfill those holes then and it's almost ready to go. Okay guys, there we go, one garden arbor all finished and in place. So this is exactly where it's gonna go into my vegetable patch here. So this is kind of stage one of this project. So I'm gonna fence off that side and fence off this side. So you'll only be able to see down here. And we're gonna glow clematis and all that kind of stuff up it. Just to whole share or to blank off this end of the garden because it's kind of messy down here and it's not very pretty with that shed and all the stuff that's going on down there. So it'll shield all that stuff off and it's a nice little entrance then into where I grow all my veg. So there you go hopefully you've enjoyed that video hopefully you've got something out of it if you have give it a thumbs up if you're new here think about subscribing comments and questions below as always i'll do my best to get back to you guys so yeah hopefully you've enjoyed it guys i'm gonna get out of here now it's time for a beer i think that's been a long day i'll see you in the next one take it easy